Hey guys, just so you know, it's easy to watch us here, but it makes a louder statement to go to full 30 or bit shoot and watch us there. Because look, we get it, YouTube's gonna do what they want, but then again, so are we. So, go, links in the description below for bit shoot and full 30. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Chris and this is Regular Guy Training. So, I got kind of a fun gun here today. Uh, my neighbor uh, knows a little bit about the whole YouTube thing and all that shit. You know, you, you meet your neighbors and you get into conversations and you ask what you do for a job and I told him the training company and YouTube and he's like, what the fuck? You know, uh, <laughs> but he decided, he came over one day and he saw me and a couple of the guys jaw jacking and shit and he was just kind of like, hey man, I got a couple of guns. Um, and he started listing a few and he goes, you know, if, if you want to run a review on any of them, I'm not sure if you have or not, you know, go ahead and, and, and do what you will. And the one that I was the most interested with to start was an MP1522. Um, I like these guns, uh, the little replicator 22s. Uh, I, I do a lot, uh, mostly because they're cool. They're really cheap to shoot and really that's it. I mean, it's, it's fun for the most part, right? Now, I could cook up all kinds of um, purposes for them and whatnot, but, you know, I'll just go ahead and get to that later. But, um, I'll tell you what, I have had experience with two different types of this of this rifle, and I can't even really say types, it's more like, um, you know, just different dates that I've used them before. Uh, my 19-year-old self, when I was extremely broke and still wanted to shoot and all that shit, uh, got an MMP-22, and that was one of the older ones with uh, the quad rail on it and all that shit. And when I started being a little more wise with my money and that kind of stuff, um, I decided I was going to go ahead and get uh, other things and sell it and whatnot. Uh, since then, I've always kind of sort of regretted it uh, for the most part. Uh, there was a part of me that, that was just kind of like, ah, well, whatever, and then a lot of time will pass, and then I'll come back to it and just kind of think, you know what, that thing was kind of cool. Uh, so I was really interested in checking out this guy. Uh, now this one is obviously it's it's a slightly newer version. It's got an M lock rail and all that stuff on there, but for all intents and purposes, it's still the same gun. Um, so let's go over let's go over a few things here and talk about the rifle itself, um, what it is and what it isn't. Right? Uh, what it isn't is a fighting implement. Right? Uh, the purposes that you use this kind of thing for are like your six year old kid. And you're starting to get them used to, you know, the ARs that are in the house by giving them a rifle that, that recoils super duper low and is a really good introduction to the whole thing. While also, um, you know, giving them the same type of controls and all that jazz. And it's a lighter rifle because it's, the receivers in the thing are polymer. And it's a blowback operated rifle. So it still gets absolutely filthy. So you get them used to cleaning it and all that kind of jazz. And the next one is if you take so many training courses and you're on a budget to the point where your broke ass can't afford, you know, regular 223 or 9 millimeter, and it happens, man. And you end up going with like 22 conversion kits or, or whatever. So you can still go to classes and get training, but a giant portion of your, your class fee for the most part is cut because you're using 22 instead of 9 millimeter or 223. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the next thing that a lot of people talk about 22s for is that it's a light little survival rifle that you can sh that you can shoot squirrels and rabbits and shit with uh, to keep your butt alive if you're out in the wilderness and that kind of deal. You know, pest control, that kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of little things that this can be used for. It's a convenient, handy little handy little rifle. Um, but like I said, what it is not is a fight is it's not a fighting implement. Therefore, I'm not going to sit here and beat. I'm not going to sit here and beat it to death over receiver construction, which it doesn't take a whole lot to overpower the cartridge, uh, as far as receiver strength and parts strength and all that other stuff. It's not a a a two two three, which is like the forty of the intermediate of the intermediate rifle world, where it's a real high pressure straight wall cartridge and all that shit. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of robust for what it is. 
Now, here's the thing about 22s, especially auto-loading 22s, and it's something that we really have to get into, understand, and accept if we're going to get into auto-loading 22s. Uh, number one, most of them are blowback. Uh, that's pretty much the best way to do it, really, because any kind of gas system for a 22, there's just not enough ass behind the round to make that work. Um, but being that it's a blowback, rim-fired cartridge, and an auto-loading system, uh, compared to the and and I put very heavy emphasis on this compared to their center fire counterparts that are that are uh, of uh, high quality and that kind of stuff um, they function kind of like shit in that they're nowhere near as reliable as like an MMP 15 right that's in 223 or a cult or a BCM or Sons of Liberty Gunworks or whatever the hell in like 223 or whatever uh, just via the nature of the cartridge, how the rims taper in the magazines and all kinds of shit. Uh, the next thing is just the magazines themselves. Like for this particular rifle, these are heavily exposed. So if you're on a really, really rusty day at a class or whatever, you pretty much got to clean these, uh, this rifle and your magazines uh, per day that you're out because enough stuff will get in here. And this is required. Um, this requires a lot of small parts to work very well. And if you add small things like dust and grit and stuff in there, it's gonna stop working, right? It's it's just gonna start. It's just gonna stop working. So you got to stay on top of it if you're gonna use it for training and all that jazz. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, you will be doing a lot of stoppage clearance on it and that kind of deal, um, especially if it like rains out in a state like this where you have that to deal with and you're dropping magazines in the mud and all that. Um, it's gonna start to work like shit. Uh, I promise you. So, compared to, you know, the the firearms that are designed as fighting implements, they do not do as well. Okay. That being said, though, there's a lot of really, 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 really shit 22 uh, conversions out there uh, for the AR, or even dedicated 22s that are really, really, really shit. And, you know what, there's really... As far as the 22s are concerned, my my personal opinion, the Ruger 1022 is like is like the absolute pinnacle of shoulder fired auto loading 22s, right? And I shot a, a few hundred rounds through this um, a couple of days ago, and I came back today, and because the stuff is at a reasonable price now, I put about a thousand rounds through it today, which is not really that big of a deal, right? But what I will say here is that. Um, in that time, the only issues that I had out of this rifle were, were really if I was using really, really old ammunition. Like, for instance, um, when my neighbor lent this to me, he had five loaded magazines. And this rifle had, and this rifle had been sitting out uh, in, in like the trunk and whatnot for a while. Uh, the ammo that was in those magazines worked like shit. Like, it would barely cycle it. it I had constant problems with it. M me and... Um, my buddy Cletus uh, had a real issue where a round got bent up in here and when a round got bent up in here it, it actually took some effort to get this guy friggin out of there um, so there's that but uh, I had a I had a box of like bulk federal I had a little bit of CCI lying around and I went out and bought some more bulk pack stuff from Walmart and I tell you what uh, all that ran pretty much flawlessly, and I say pretty much because uh, I, I think today I had a couple of stoppages or something like that, but it, it's enough for, for it to not stand out. And in its own right, that stands out because it's an auto-loading 22 that's boring. See what I'm saying? A lot of times auto-loading 22s are not boring because you end up running into issues here or there. Um, so, in my mind, uh, the amount of shooting I did today is a lot, is a lot. But then again, a lot of a lot of 22s, especially auto loading 22s, have the absolute bejesus shot out of them. So a thousand rounds in a day, depending on you know whether or not you want to run out and spend a few a few bucks at Walmart or whatever, that's really not that much, you know. So a thousand rounds out of a out of a 22 in a day is enough for me to be like, here's a handshake. These are like my first impressions. You see what I'm saying? Um, so, I was quite happy with it. Um, and, it and it ran pretty good. Now, here's the thing. Um, it's very AR-esque in that you can 
change certain things out, but aside of like pistol grip and stock I'm, and muzzle device, which I don't even know why you would. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong on the muzzle device thing, because I'm not even sure that you can re-thread that. But you know, aside of like a little bit of furniture here and there, uh, there's not much more that you can do to it as far as customizability. And realistically speaking, on a gun like this, I really wouldn't change it out anyway. I would put that money towards a center-fired rifle. Um, the RMR that's sitting on here, dude, you can get away with like a Walmart optic on this thing. Um, the RMR that's sitting here came off of the AK. That's the only reason why it's here. And it came off of the AK, and it's like at the intermediate point between coming off the AK and that got replaced with other stuff. And, um, and going back onto a pistol, ironically a my MMP core. So another Smith & Wesson problem. But is what it is. Uh, here's another thing too and it's just something that they do. Uh, the upper and lower receivers, the way that they fit together like um, I believe it's not just size of the pins but the location of the pins too are slightly off so that you can't put any AR-15 uppers or lowers on this. And this buffer tube is just solid like you see about right here. It's just a solid brick wall. Um, so that you cannot use this lower on an AR upper and that kind of thing. And they just kind of do that, uh, I personally believe, for like liability reasons and that kind of stuff. So, there you go. Um, so really there ain't that much to say about it. Um, I think it's a fun gun, I think it's a great little introduction for like kids and stuff. And if you're broke as shit and still want to go out and take classes, this is a good alternative. Because A, you'll be doing more uh, stoppage clearance. Uh, the normal, so that's a good, that's a good training thing, and uh, B issues with fundamentals will still throw you off target and that kind of stuff. And if you're shooting at greater distances, the wind will take it. Like at 100 yards, if you got a strong enough wind, it'll take you around. You know, um, I recommend zeroing at like 50 yards, right, and then just kind of going from there. Uh, <clears throat> so is what it is. What do you guys think? You know, who here owns one of these things and how many rounds have you put through it? I'd be really interested in, the see, in seeing that. And, oh, by the way, these magazines, um, they're not, they're not the, the cheapest things ever. I, I will count this as a con to, uh, the, to the pistol, the rifle itself, because these are more expensive than, than in some cases, AR-15 magazines, if you look around. So I would pay, I would pay very close attention and, and, if anything, try doing some shopping online and try to find cheaper ones. But uh, aside of the huge opening in the side, um, they work just fine, you know. So, oh, and you can take them down and service them. So that helps. But that's all I got, guys. If you want to come out and train with us, you can certainly come out and do that, whether or not it's a 22. Um, we have a lot of different classes that are set to go uh, in a lot of places. Frickin', um, our next nearest one is Pistol 1 and 2 at Bud's in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, I've, been at, I've been getting asked a lot about rifle courses, and here's the thing. Um, in August, we're going to the NOLA Attack Training Center in uh, Louisiana. We're going there for Rifle 1 and 2. Okay, so uh, check out the link in the description below, and you'll be able to see the list of classes that we have currently. Um, I think that class, uh, because it's the most recent one, shows up. Uh, after you click on the link first, that Rifle 1 and 2 class. Um, and here's the deal. Aside of my boyos that are going to Montana, if you wanted to go and take a rifle class from us at, where you have the capability to stretch out to like three-ish football fields, this is the one to go to. Okay. If you're going to Montana, you have the same capability over there. But for the guys that are on this side of, of the country and want to be able to stretch out your rifle and still put it in a class and all that stuff, this is the class to go to. So check that out. Um, if you want to support us through Patreon and all that stuff, it's real easy to do. Um, go to the link in the description below. If you don't have an account, you'll have to set one up. Um, if you wanted to train with us for a very low price, right? Um, you can sign up for $35 a month through Patreon and that gives you the ability to train as much as possible with us while you're signed up with that. And for my guys that have taken a million classes from us, this might be a relative, th uh, relative thing for you to research and maybe put a little bit of money into so you can continue taking classes and all that stuff on a way less expensive budget. Just saying, because there's, there's pistol conversion kits too for the 22. Not from Smith & Wesson, but from other people. Um, so there you go. 
Uh, if not, and you just want to throw a couple of dimes at us here and there, that's perfectly good too. Uh, it's an all voluntary thing. I'm not asking anyone to do shit. But I will say that if you do that, it goes toward us uh, training people uh, in our soldier program. For instance, um, in the, when we go to Louisiana, we're bringing a soldier uh, at, to that rifle class and we're paying for everything. You know, flight, food, um, gear, ammo, all that stuff. And we've done that to quite a few soldiers in the last year that we've been uh, doing our thing. So, you know, even if you want to throw a dime or, a, or whatnot at us here and there, it goes a lot farther than you think. So, and if we don't use it on the soldier program, guys, we certainly do um, put that money uh, to good use in the channel and all that. So, there you go. Uh, other than that, freaking, if you want to join the Facebook page or watch us on Facebook, or, um, correction, on Full 30 or Bit Shoot, you can certainly do that. Links for all that are in the description below. So, I'm done talking, guys. Remember, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.